Hey, welcome back everybody to another session here at Virtual Coaches Clinic. And joining me today is Coach Paul Kelleher. Uh, Coach uh, Kelleher is the national coach for the UAT team in Ireland. And um, we're excited to talk about um, short, you know, SSGs and using them in transition. So uh, uh, really looking forward to hearing him speak and joining his uh, Twitter feed and the, the information he shares with coaches. So um, Paul, just go ahead and take it away here and, 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 and let's roll. Sure. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. It's um, it's kind of unexpected, but it's kind of uh, it's going. To, I I'd like to think it's going to be fun. Um, yeah. So I guess where I kind of come from, um, I was that guy that was the on all guy, the the guy that was just all about intensity and effort to practice, and the kind of war on me. Um, and then I guess you know a couple of people brought in. Um, a couple of friends of mine brought in Don Smith from Canada and they went through the whole phase A, B, C and D element of it. And it kind of changed the whole aspect of, of how I coached and practice planned and, and taught. Um, and I think we're seeing benefits of it, of it now with the national team. Um, albeit we still have another jump or two to make. So, um, so yeah, so I guess where we're going to go with this is, is kind of, talking about the skills that are required in transition basketball, the, the defensive elements of it, the actual skill set, the, the passing element of it. Um, we're going to show a full video. I'm not really going to show a presentation. I guess I just like to show what, what we do. Um, and it's going to be a combination of our under 14 BI Academy, which is the pathway beginning for our national team, a bit of senior women's stuff and I was assistant there. Um, and the current on the 14 club team that I coach also. Um, so some of it's going to be good, some of it's going to be not so good, depending on the level of, of player and things like that. But I think the gist of what we're trying to do and how we do it uh, will come through uh, pretty good, I think. So I'm just going to share my screen um, and go from there. Um, so is that, is that okay with you, Jason? Yes, um, that looks great. Yeah, so, um, you know, I'm going to try and leave it play through as best I can. So I, I guess we're going to call a small side of games, really, but there's a GWP when I, I kind of rethinking the whole small side of games in, in terms of that's how we create a fun element of um, young kids playing basketball. But I think there's an element of the small side in this where there's a purpose and, and the GWP, I'm having these discussions with other people, is, is games with purpose where we're actually specifically putting a constraint in place to teach something, which we showed throughout one or two times throughout this as well. So, yeah, I guess I'll just get to it. So, um, small side of games and, and leads to transition. So, why this style? It's, it's our way of creating an advantage. And people, the whole thing of creating an advantage is, is the, the done word right now. And, and I guess the easiest way to create an advantage to create a dominoes effect is is through transition and make defenses turn their heads in and spin and we try and take advantage of that as best we possibly can. And it puts defense in their heels, allows us to play more guys and knowing they will come out and get back in. Um, and we don't have to go against size that we struggle with, with with our national teams that we don't have the size and compared to other teams. So I think it helps us get down the floor a little bit quicker and then try and get into a bit of pressing action a little bit as well. So, um, I guess warm-up games, um, you know, we use these ones right here, uh, reaction. So when you're pressing, you kind of have to have that quick reaction off the, off, the, off the loose balls, off of deflections. So as you can see, we start from a standing position. We get to the knees if we dive off on the floor. So we're really working on that reaction of creating loose balls and getting after loose balls as best we possibly can. So as you see here, we're on our butts and, and trying to get off the floor. So... We just kind of warm up with that with the academy, a lot of teams and maybe at camps and stuff like that. So that's just one of the fun things that we try and do to get into it. And this one right here is, is a five-man ball handling drill. Um, and I've seen it, I saw it done one or two times with, with no basketball. And I try and make a game related as best I possibly can. So this one here is like, we just use the elbows and the, block, and the line below the block. Um, and a guy in the middle, it's a bit like Piggy in the middle, but... It's just chasing spots. So we try and get them to see and react and move with the basketball and change direction and change speeds. Um, and we try and put a bunch of kids around the, around the floor 
um, and get as much into it and get as many kids reps. And as you can see, it's about quick reactions, having your eyes up and seeing where they can go. And as you can see, sometimes they make mistakes, sometimes they don't. So uh, warm-up drills. This is actually a pre-game warm-up drill that we do with our club team. Um, instead of just your regular layup lines, we try and get their minds active as, as best we possibly can. And we do it from the from up top of the key, and we do it from the two sides, um, from different angles. Um, and this is a, one that we do a practice quite a bit. Um, we do it from different angles. You'll see it in a second. Um, but again, the reason why we do all these is because when you're in transition, the defense is coming from different angles and different areas, and we just feel that um, teaching them to go against contact from different angles and different positions makes them better finishers as they get older. Um, as you can see, it we just allow them. So here's one from the side. And again, it's, it's our younger kids with the club. And again, you're coming from the baseline here. And, and it, it just gets them thinking and it gets them to understand the mental aspect of finishing as well. Um, and you can see it's a little bit of floaters and different speeds and different guys. This is our senior women team. Um, so we just advanced it a little bit where now it's, and you can teach defense through this as well. So now we're going into a bit of floaters and how we teach the floater against defense coming from different angles. And we just try and create a constraint where they have to work in the floor. And we teach this to really young kids. And here, you know, I suppose the whole talk right now is the, the block, block teaching versus, you know, teaching, teaching games or, or, or through game, skill through game aspect of it. So you can see the start to be here is, that threw the leg on the, sp on the spot, which is probably a bit of block learning, and then the defender going out to the block and making it difficult to, to finish. So again, it's a, it's a quick ball handling drill, and, it's, and then it's against the defender. Um, and sometimes the finishes will be a floater, and sometimes the finishes will be a reverse layup, like we're showing right here. So a um, bit of warm-up passing. And this one is, again, I adopted it from, from good friends that – have taught me this and as I said I was the guy that was the on all guy that was all about the effort intensity and, and didn't really teach the, the choices that kids had to make so this one again it was was taught to me and it's we don't allow kids um move diagonally it's only left or right so it's 3v2 and it's just getting their minds active again and we'll have a bunch of different spots around the floor in this this is actually one of my favorite um drills in terms of and we do this as a teaching possibly at times with, with younger kids, but we do it as a warm-up, as you'd see with our, with our older kids. And it creates a kind of a fun atmosphere, but at the same time, it still emphasizes things that we want to teach um, in terms of, you know, recovery, closeouts, uh, protection. So we call this the dragonfly, and the front, the front person is to um, be the closeout guy, the recovery guy, um, and the dragonfly's tail is the last guy. And the purpose is for the, and then we're working on passing with the outside circle. So the outside circle has got to hit the dragonfly's tail. So the four guys got to work together. They got to communicate. They got to recover. Um, they got to react pretty quickly. And you know you can see the smiles on the face of the kids, and they're reacting. And, and sometimes you know they get caught. And the, actually, the under 18s are actually not as good as the academy kids probably because they're passing as quick. So this is our under 18 team. As you can see, there's a bit of confusion and, and stuff like that. And probably because the dragonfly is probably a little bit too long, but there's a bit of fun aspect of it. They're moving the ball. You can see the recovery, you know, and, you know, they have a bit of fun while they're trying to move it and, and things like that. And there's a bit of communication. They get really frustrated. You can see whether they're is trying to, is getting a bit frustrated. So some of the skills that we try and teach, so, Again, this is probably what I would call a game of purpose rather than a small sided game. Um, so we make them see that there's different reactions. So on this one here, um, Sean is forcing the uh, key into the baseline uh, with a touch. So even the defense doesn't know what way, what what space they're giving up. And then Dylan is on the on the weak side becoming the defender. So we're working on our floaters against defense again. And it's just a late one. So this time he has to go middle. Sean is late, so it's an easier finish. And this one, again, you're talking about block learning and, and, te and, and games of purpose. So the cut we taught with a chair, and that's a block learning element of it. 
Sean Noonan's at the basket in the in the basket, and he is the guy to defense. And then so we're teaching a pro stop, and then we're getting back out. We're playing one on one. So the guy to defense get off the floor, and therefore we're just allowing them experiment. So there's another block learning again. Guy to defense, and now we're back into a live one on one, um, and we're reading. So the constraints are different. This is our national team, so we call this the Jordan dribble. And purely because of the fact that's the dribble he used to dunk on Patrick Ewing against the Knicks. So, again, this is guided defense. We're deliberately coming high to open up the space, and it's just a warm drill, and we're layering it bit by bit. So, again, we're forcing the high side, a late defense. So, we're working again and getting skills, finishing against defense in transition. And you'll see how this becomes relevant later on in, in, the, in the presentation. So, slow motion. Again, Connor deliberately comes high to allow the, the offense to, to get there and the defense is deliberately late. Now this one, the defense is a little bit earlier. So now he has to work on a little bit of a floater and things like that. So again, we're layering it. It's a game of purpose rather than a small sided game, this one um, and so on. This is what we advance to it. Um, every year we try and reflect a little bit and, and add some things to it. Again, this is a game of purpose. So it's a, a one versus one into a new versus one. So now when the Jordan dribble isn't there, we come back into a ball screen, the ball screen's taken away, and now we're playing one-on-one -on -one, um, against the guy in, in jail. So we believe that passing out into the post is a skill, and what we do off the pass is a skill. So this is a Spurs cut, and you see it when we get into game footage later on in the presentation. You know, we teach Spurs cuts, and this is probably an automatic rather than, rather than a, a choice. So again, we're looking at Spurs cuts and, and we're looking at working on passing through defenders. So again, we're playing 2v2. You can see Dara's trying to create an angle and their Paul is getting into our automatic Spurs cut. Again, you see how this is, works in game footage later on. Um, these are actually our forwards and we do the very same. It's, it's an automatic action. Our guards working in the post and there we relocate the three and we work on that with the, with the big man. So now we get to our teaching elements of it and our, and our defense. So this is, a, again, this is probably a bit of block learning. This is a drill I got off of Kevin Boyle um, years and years ago. And it's, I use it when we have multiple, multiple kids. So this is kind of like the teaching and the, and, and the phase A as, the, as Don Smith in Canada taught us. Um, so we're deliberately working on closing out. And again, we're recovering. Lots of kids. We have 36 at practice this day, I think. Um, so again, we're working on, deliberately working on recovering, closing out. But again, it's, it's, we're teaching footwork. This one here is the old zigzag drill. Um, we don't teach it as a zigzag drill. We call it the gauntlet. And you can see that there's four quadrants here in a second. So we try and have a consequence from where we're beaten. And we talk about keeping the gate closed. And by keeping the gate closed, we can keep people in front of us. And when we open the gate, that's when we get beat. So you're going to see some good stuff and you're going to see some not so good stuff. But we play it live. We don't do it deliberately like a zigzag drill where they have to take three dribbles to the left and three dribbles to the right. So the offense is working on their ball handling and the defense is working on their defense. And again, we talk about being a wall. So we want our kids to be a wall and not a pole. And we use the analogy as if you're being chased by a dog. Would you rather see a wall or would you rather see a pole? Um, and inevitably, they always say they want to see a pole because it's easy to get by. So we try and teach them to be a wall. So we're difficult. And this is a good one here. His hands are wide. He's using his feet and he's being a wall. So we try and teach our shooting through, through live activity. So again, we're being chased and just having that mental pressure of, of making shots. And this one here is our international team. And again, we're trying to create separation advantage. And we try and teach our kids to shoot against defense as much as we possibly can. Because if we're in transition, we're going to be against that where teams are scrambling and fly buying and things like that so we try and encourage them to um to shoot in, in transition and to shoot when they have space so our, our our thought process is in terms of good shooting is be on balance be in rhythm and be uncontested and after reflecting on it we're going to add a fourth one next year be in range so know your range so here this is one of our under our under 18 coach in the club and, I, and i've i'll be stealing this one from him but again, he's creating an advantage where there's a scramble, there's a long closeout. And again, the kids are having to work against the defender. And, and it's just as much getting reps in this as you would in the regular shooting drill. But now we're doing it against defense. So our under-18 coach um, done this. And, and now he's narrowing the constraint 
where now they're having to go by off of one dribble. Um, so again, it's teaching to see and recognize and make a choice whether it's a straight, adva- a straight, um, straight um, shot or whether you have to put the ball on the floor. And this one here, again, we go back to our under 14 club team and we're trying to teach in the half court first before we get to the full court because we, we're trying to teach what it's like to be chased. And when you're in transition, you're constantly being chased um, by defenders, you're being long closed out. So you have to make quick choices. And as you can see, it's a forward here, and this is a, this is a big 13 year old who's putting the ball on the floor. Um, so we allow them to put the ball on the floor and we teach them that they're dribbling off of this as well. Um, and this one's fairly prominent on the internet right now. So again, once the palm leaves the hand, that's when the defense is allowed goal. So the offense dictates that. This one, again, it's making a choice. So the passer is the defender, and the defender chooses which chair to go around. And whichever chair the defender goes around, the offense goes around the other chair. So we're teaching how to curl on the catch. We're teaching how to see it here. So he's got a rip and go, and he adds in it through the legs. And again, the defense, now he's been chased again, and he has to work on, he changes direction, so he's beginning to see that. And we allow them to make those, I suppose, intelligent choices or creative choices, and this is two and two, so we've done the same drill in the one and one, and brought it into a two and two. So our drills are, basically with this team, we only gave them a couple of teaching points. And the, te- the three teaching points we gave them all year was an automatic, which was every pass, they gotta make a cut. So they're becoming an offensive rebounder in case the guy that passed the two shoots it. And then we gave them two off ball um, where we let them make choices. And we said, once you get in the key, you have to relocate outside the three to free up space for everybody else. And then when they're outside without the basketball, we ask them to see a head and see a shoulder. And by saying, by giving them that, they, we're allowing them to make a choice. And when they see a shoulder, they got a hold space. And when they see a back of the head, that allows them to back cut a little bit. So we're trying to give them a bit of understanding of spacing, timing, freeing up for others, and things like that. And I think this was early in the year, so it wasn't as good. And we show a couple of ones there on. And we encourage them to shoot the three. We encourage them every opportunity. And you see Sean, a nice early pass. They get to see receiving pass under pressure. They give passes under pressure. The defense, whether they're early or late, you know, and the footwork that they, they get. This one is they really, really enjoy, and we call this cat and mouse. So what they have to do here is we build this in, in a one and one to two and two to three and three again, and four and four if possible. But the offense stays outside the three-point line. The defense is not allowed inside the three-point line until the offense gets inside there. And it just allows them to work in their ball handling for a few minutes, um, and then to have deception, to have an act, and to really attack the the rim with purpose, so they're being chased. So we're really trying to teach them skills within the game aspect of it. And again, we allow them to finish with their right hand and the left hand. We're not traditional in, in what they do. And again, you're building up into 2v2. And we again, you're creating a long closeout, the relocation by Sean to the three-point line. And again, he has that aspect, and, and you're using the pro stop and rip buys, you know. And these kids, you know, not the most athletic in the world, but they, they really began to learn how to play and utilize their intelligence because they, and again, it's the early pass and giving it up and making sure that these, their teammates are successful. So this is a three and three. Again, an early pass, he relocates to the three, wide open for the three, and we encourage it. It's not the best technique in the world, but we, we believe that they'll get better at that because their ability to, and confidence to take that um, as well. So. So this is the one you saw earlier where we warmed them up with reaction drills. And in time, I began to realize that we, why can't we do that in, in a game setting as well? So what we've done is we put the defense, sorry, we put a thrower behind the offense on the wing. The defense is on the baseline and the defense isn't allowed to move until the ball hits the floor because obviously they'll see the pass before the offense will. So the offense can't see, so they're working on their first step reaction which we believe is very important, again, in, in terms of the half court and transition. So again, and they, we teach them to catch with their eyes up and we allow them to make choices as much as they possibly can. And we do this with senior teams as well and they really enjoy it from time to time because it's just outside of what they normally do and adds a bit of fun aspect. You can see they're readjusting their feet. 
Now we make it a 2v2. So it's the same thing. The ball is thrown over a head from, from one of the wings. And again, he saw the back of a head, so he made that cut, and that was a great choice by him. So now again, it's 2v2. And again, they become hesitant, and he didn't finish his cut. So one of our keys is you have to finish your cut. When you make a decision to cut, you have to finish it. So again, they'll make mistakes on this, but I'm okay with that because they're only 30, 12, 13, 14 years old, and, and, and they'll get that right as they as they go along. So an early pass frees up space by relocating. And again, he rotates the three-point line. And after making a mistake the last one, he knocks down the shot in this one. So this is a skill that we really believe in. This is something that we really believe at the rim. They have to be balanced. And we call this the pro stop. And I guess, you know, if we evaluate it to the NBA, uh, Trey Young, Derek Rose, they're really, really guards that we show a video to our national team to get them to buy into the fact that this is something that really is required. So again, it's a 1v1 drill. There's a guided defender, a bit of a walk there, but again, you can see the fact that they're able to go one on one and they're balanced. And you see that they're passing their footwork. We work on footwork within the same skit and same in teaching them to play one on one. So it's there's the pro stop again. He gets his close out, reacting, and the defense sees and makes a step back on this. So again, we're working on pivoting, we're working on footwork, we're working on skill development, we're working, again, you're looking at more pivots. So they're getting all their skill and their fundamentals in through the small games of understanding. Again, we're bringing this into 2v2. Sean's trying to relocate, he sees the back of a head, he gets a cut, not the best finish in the world, but again, the finishing isn't the, the issue, it's their understanding that we're really trying to get in the half court. And these are all the things that they're, yeah, and William gets a nice layup. But these are all things that they're really trying to develop so that when we get into the full court, and you see it in a while, we're not far away from it now, that they're really trying to develop that where they're relocating, Jake is relocating, Sean is really trying to find them movement and he gets them on the back door eventually. This is with the seat with our under 18s from two years ago, just at the early stages of it. No guy to defender, and that's what we added in the last couple of years was having that guided defender the first time where we didn't have it here. So you see it's working on both sides. And again, they're really working on early pull-ups if needs be, finishing at the rim, you know, shot faking. So all those fundamental skills are still being developed. This is a two and two. And again, we're utilizing it, relocating around the three-point line, which is a huge thing for us. And again, they're still allowed to use their skills. Sometimes we'll add in actions that we want to do so they'll have to dribble at which is a handoff or that when we get to the three and three they'll have to and again we're working on post entries but again we might have to work on screen aways and we can work on a different action each evening depending on what we're looking to do so on this one he's working on a screen away with freeing up the one-on-one on the, on the ball side um relocating to the three-point line not the best pass in the world we, and we get somewhat of a decent look this is early in the program. We had a lot of kids in the program at this point. But um, again, curls off the screen and he gets into the floater here. So again, we're teaching handoffs in the game for understanding. So you'd see in a second. So he, he the handoff is against no defense. So that's a block learning of it. But now we're getting into 2v2. So he takes it. The, the handoff guy becomes defender. And now we're into 2v2. And again, we relocate and the passer became the cutter. So again, we're working on our pull-ups. So all our skills that we work on, we're putting a constraint in place where those skills can be developed. Not the best spacing in the world. And this was early in the year again. So as you see, Timmy is relocating to the three as per guidelines and what we're trying to teach them to create, keep the spacing. And here we bring it into a three and three aspect of it. Sean again saw that the defender helped. He saw the back of a head and he decided that was the time to make a cut. So Luke holds space, frees up the drive. So again, you can see all the aspects that we're trying to teach them are in that. So again, by relocating to the three, he frees up space. Again, Justin relocates. And one of the things that we tend to find early is that sometimes young kids, all they want to do is put the ball on the floor. So sometimes we really have to encourage them even though they may not be making a lot of shots, that the right decision is to shoot it when there's space there on that. So again, Timmy rotates behind, 
poor defender coming out, but he gets the open look and we can continue to, but it's the right choice. And we really try and encourage them to understand good choices. So nice little cut again. And again, the timing isn't great from time to time in terms of the on time on target with the pass, but we get there. So this is the start now of get us getting into the full court. So we go one on one and we, the ball starts in the corner, one pass in, one pass out. They're only allowed three dribbles. And we, we identify each dribble with a purpose. So the first dribble must be to attack. The second dribble must be to create separation. And the third dribble, if they need it, must be utilized to get a score. So that's the reason why we only give them three dribble max, to make them really efficient with their, with their dribbling. So as you can see, their footwork is decent enough. So we go from the corners and we work our way around to the half court, to the other half court. So we're working on one-on-one -on -one in transition first. But we've developed all the skills they need in the half court first. So you see now it's in, and again, it's only three dribbles. And that first dribble you'll see has to be aggressive to put the defense on the heels. And we could teach defense through this as well, obviously. So Justin really attacks him. He changes direction off the second dribble to create separation and then finish. And Timmy again, first dribble wasn't great, but the second dribble was really good. And the third dribble got him to score. And again, you can see we're really teaching our forwards and he didn't need th um, that third dribble and he decided to make a shot in it. So again, he turned him on that or in the opposite corner now. And you'll see in the next one how we made this into 4v4. So we can build this into 2v2, 3v3 and 4v4. So now we got 4v4 and we're, really, we're developing it in. Sean makes a cut. Tyrese doesn't hold the space as well as we'd like, but Luke re relocated and made the three from, from the corner. So again, Justin is attacking with the first dribble. Keen spaced out to the three. Justin relocates after the pass. Timmy becomes no amount of color. And you can see they've gotten better as the year went down through our games that we really tried to create with them. And that freed up the drive for Keen. Um, and Justin got the rebound and we moved on. So again, and we, and we really try, and one of the things that we try and do in every practice is come up with a one-on-one -on -one that we can build into 2v2, 3v3, and 4v4. Each, each, each evening. So we start in a different 1v1 each evening to build it into 4v4 before we get into our 5v5 full court. This is our under 18 at the start of the year. So again, it's just one of those things of becoming a defender in transition and becoming an offensive player in transition. So again, it's just a, a simple warm-up drill again, identifying what we're trying to do, only allow three dribbles. Um, and go from here. So this is where we kind of get into it, where we really allow them change direction and again, really work on their under pressure dribbles in full court. And you can do this with seniors, with under 11s, under 14s, 15s. And it can be used as a warm up drill, an end of practice drill or a teaching drill, depending on whatever way you want to do this. So we will layer this and they can go whatever direction. We normally put them on offense for 10 possessions, defense for 10 possessions, and switch over. So again, we're working on deception in the full court a little bit as well. So this one here, uh, the coach says go, and whoever has the ball at goal, it becomes a 2v1 with a trailer second. And again, we're working on timing in transition and building up slowly and slowly um, per, per, um, as we layer it. And an early pass this time, and William gets there. So this one, we're layering another one. So now we're going in the half court, back to full court in this. It's um, 19 hours. So now he's gotten a rebound and now we're working on transition defense. Again, just as much as we are on offense, our transition offense. So again, we go from here. I say goal and whoever has it on goal is the initial, um, defense, or initial uh, ball handler. And this one here is half court 3v2. So before we start getting into the 11-man drill, so again, we've all seen this in 4v4 or 5v5 in the full court, but again, we've never really done it in, in the half court. And I think we, I believe that we have to teach them in the half court before we can get them in. This is our senior women. And Francis Sullivan brought this one into us. And really, this one was a really good one. Again, the defense initiates the transition. So once the defense passes to the coach, now we become, now we become, um, active in, in the offensive end. So this is the 11-man drill, and what we eventually want to build into our full court is what we're looking at. 
So I think everybody used the 11 man drill, but again, it's the teaching points that you're looking for. So we really emphasize the three point line and we really emphasize early offense and we really emphasize getting to the corners. This one is one of my favorite ones. We only developed this one. Well, I didn't develop it. It was actually Jared Hillier gave, gave me this one. But we developed it into a 2v2 and a 3v3. So the defense is in front. Whichever side the defense goes, the offense got to go opposite. So as you can see, the 2v2 is different each time. And we're working on contact in transition as well. And you can see our forwards are handling it. They're cutting. They're relocating out to the three. You know, and then you get some skilled players that can really finish without having balance. So again, we're circling the three-point line. Again, we're, te- we're allowing them to make mistakes, but it's the movement. It's the learning to play in transition because this is the movements that we have in our game. So um, Edvardus, he saw the back of the head and he made a cut and he got into the post. So again, Justin goes opposite. Now it's a strong side 2v2 as opposed to a weak side 2v2. And then we end up getting defenders making mistakes so we can teach it. Now we're in 3v3 and it's the exact same. So we have a strong side 3v3 now. And we relocate. And we're working on our balance in the key and we get an open look because we force the defense to chase. And again, we're only allowed to have three dribbles after we, after we turn the chair. So we're building up into our transition and it's it's again, it's trusting our teammates to give the score or to give the pass and relocate and not have to score in the first six seconds. That was a, a decent choice by Luke because the defense backed off. So again, we're looking for early offense if possible. We, you know, some guys just don't get it as much. But again, we're as you can see, this is our under 18 team. This is what we call our phase B, where this is deliberate. And we'll see in a while where we utilize this and transition as a secondary scheme. Again, so we Again, we're in transition, we're hitting the long corners, we're blasting up as a phrase that we use, and we're deliberately slipping, and that's just a deliberate. So this is our phase B where we're deliberately doing this and we're deliberately getting the defense to play high in order to show what it's like for the offense and what they've got to feel. So again, the slip, and then we're working on our passing against guided defense as well. So we're teaching it first, but we're teaching it through a slower phase of the defense. This is the live action of it now. So again, two, three v three, and this time we're playing live. And again, it's in the half court. So now we're working on screenaways, freeing up the one on one on the strong side. And again, we're relocating to the three. We're spacing out, screening, and we're diving. Not there. Using our pro stop, and now we're creating that long closeout. And this is. Here. One of our things that we really emphasize, and our kids hate me saying this, but it's something that we really emphasize, and, and we, we say that missed layups aren't just missed layups. And what we mean by that is that there's nearly always a consequence more than just a missed layup. And it really tries to get us to focus on making sure that we're efficient at the, at the rim, whichever way we can. So inevitably, a missed layup leads to a, a run out on the other end. Inevitably, it leads to maybe a foul or some sort of frustration. So there's always another consequence after the missed layup. And I truly believe that um, in that. So missed layups aren't just missed layups. So this was last summer. And when we make bad choices, we miss layups. So we get run out by Macedonia. Macedonia were top 14 in the end. I think we lost this one by 12 or 14. But they punished us massively on the, um, on the transition. So again, taking an off-balance layup, and we get punished on the other end because of it. This one here again. So you can see the easy kick out, we drew the advantage, the kick out was to James. We didn't take it, we took a bad contested layup and we ended up being out of position because of the missed layup and we can't get into our defense and our transition defense is poor and we actually end up giving up a three, not just a layup. Again, not balanced against Slovak. We didn't use our pro stop and we, against contact. So one of our things that we teach is against no contact is a speed finish, which means you can go off of one foot, but against contact, you must be balanced and get that pro stop down and we end up being punished on the other end because we, we didn't follow that guideline. Um, again, it's another poor decision. We weren't balanced in the lane and we, you know, Ukraine were a tough team and we end up losing that game by seven. Um, but again, we're not being balanced and we're taking contested poor choices at the rim rather than being balanced. 
and we end up getting run out in this one as well. So again, off balance, miss layup, and we end up giving up a three on this because of not sticking to what we're emphasizing and teaching through our games. And we come from 17 down and we got back to four um, and we missed that one. I think we gave up, um, yeah, uh, we gave up a layup on that one as well. So that, that one hurt us a little bit too. Um, and again, just forcing it. And, I, and I'm a big fan of banging in the post. As you can see, the hand is wide open on the three and that would have been a better choice, especially with a lot of time on the shot clock as well. So this is what happens when we are balanced. And we are in a decision, we are when we're in a position that we can really be confident. And we generally get a lot of three-point plays. Um, and that was Rapp and he had, um, so we moved the ball quite well. You know, and through our games, we've taught this and we've taught the the space that we want to attack, and you can see it. And Killian, this is two years ago against Macedonia in Macedonia, and again he used the pro stop against balance. Um Oshin Rice here, nice little fake. And again, against contact, being balanced with the pro stop and getting a three-point play. Using our defense, staying balanced in transition. So now Sanmi gets it. He gets it on the wing. He's in transition. He's our stretch four. And again, he's balanced in the lane as opposed to what you've seen twice already. And again, another three-point play because we're balanced and we're drawing the fouls and we're creating more contact. And again, we don't make the layup on this one by wrap, but we do get the foul. And you can see it where... We are getting contact here. And Matthew Harper here again, one of my favorite pro stops, even though he doesn't make it. But again, we're going to the line and we're not getting run out on because we're being balanced. And we use it here as a pass and we end up getting the three-point play off of this one as well. Our actions, and this is where we taught. So we saw the slip and working on it. The slip wasn't there, but now we get reversal and we end up getting a backdoor cut because of our transition. Our pressing. Or sorry, our defense. So our on-ball defense is pretty good now from our, our movement. Um, so we did force in the middle, we get our close out, we force a, a tough contested shot, and now we can get out in our transition, which is what we practice every single time in the great kick out by Paul Kelly and Mar Harper hits the open three in transition. So our on-ball defense is good again. James Canary gets screened, but we, we recover to it because of our health defense. Again, we're on-ball defense is good, we switch it. And again, we're staying in front of the ball and we're keeping the gate closed and David Han a really great job of closing and we end up getting a turnover. So again, we end up, and this is, again, you don't know how you're going to finish in transition. So we have to practice that, which is what we did all along as well. So our pressing, and again, we're allowing us to get into, into our presses from our transition. So now we steal it against Norway. This is in our home arena last summer against Norway. And again, because we're balanced, all those skills, they're coming into it and we end up getting into a press because of the fact that we're able to score off them. And this was just before halftime. So again, we're in our press. We rotate quite well and we force what we call a rainbow passes where we get gold at the end of it. And again, and that was on the buzzer at halftime, so we got that. But again, we're trying to force all these things and we practice those within our uh, small games. So again, we get a rebound, we're gone, we're in transition. And this is what we call a pipe run. But we practice this within, as you saw, with our, with our small kids. Less dribbles, we hit, and we, again, we're trailing, and we end up getting our transition. A nice rebound, and we're gone. But we practice this in our transition drills, which you've seen, or trailing, which you've seen. And this is all because we practice it against um, against defense. So one of the things that we do, and it's probably, I wouldn't say it's unique, but it's something that we probably goes against the normal teachings. We try and flatten the corners with the dribble and without the dribble. Um, and we do this because again, we want to get to that scenario that we identified earlier of turning heads and, um, and seeing shoulders. So the back of the head and, and seeing the shoulder. So by getting to the corners, we believe we can flatten the defense. There's our post entry. And again, there's our see a head, see a shoulder, and we end up getting a nice little cut because of that from the weak side. Um, we flatten it again. This is our replay action. And again, because we work on our passing drills, we work on games all the time, we can get those deception passes and fakes. And that's something that we really have a staple in our offense that we've been known for in the last couple of Europeans. Again, we play solid defense. And again, we're gone. We're gone really quickly. 
but this time they take away the, the replay and now we're able to attack. But I don't think you can teach those decisions against zero defense. And again, you see in transition, we get our spurs got in the back door, which again, you see the head and sees the shoulder. So we taught all of this in the half court to make it that when we're in full flow in transition and our spacing outside the three again, that we can do all these things the right way. And it's something that I think has been successful for us. It's made us really competitive as a small nation. There's a replay again, and we get tax space because we identify it and we work on it on how to take advantage of space. So now we get the reversal off of this one, and you see that from the top of the key, we get that high load because the defense is scrambling, and we get an uncontested layup. Um, we also encourage, as you see, our forwards to put the ball on the floor. So because we let them do that in practice in the game scenario, they can do that in transition as well. So now again, we're working on the transition and we're put feeding the post early. Our Spurs coach, which you saw us work on a while ago, and we really try and take advantage and create a dominoes effect and quick ball movement because of our games and something that we emphasize. You see us relocating and the passer became the color, which made that he got an offensive rebound. And again, you see that Spurs cut and it's a, a second one here. Um, but again, we, another, a third one, but we really emphasize that because of our spacing and in our transition, we move it against game actions. And we got called for travel, I think it was a bit unfortunate that one. Um, and when they start taking that away, we get some weak side actions. Um, and as you see here, CJ is going to be here. Paul Kelly is going to turn the corner without a weak side action. And again, we're really focusing on staying at the three point line. It's a bad two, it's one that we don't like. But again, it was, it was a nice bad pass by Sammy. And again, because we're getting a weak side action again with Tiernan on the weak side, he gets the open three on the on the weak side. So we're getting those exchanged, and that's all because of our things that we work on in the small side of games and the rules that we kind of or the guidelines that we give that bring that we are that we are able to bring forward into into a, a game scenario. And this time to stay at the weak side, and Paul gets a drive because he's he's seen that in practice when we make those adjustments in, in practice. So when we can't flatten, what do we do? Um, and we try and bring up, free up space. But again, you saw it in our live shooting that we can encourage them to be brave, to take shots when they're wide open. Um, so again, you see the space, good screen by Sanmi. And, and again, you can see rebounders coming in. And here's that same action again. And we've run this for, for a long time, so it's not something that we, we've kept a secret. And therefore, we get the slip because we identify space. And that was against an older team as well. So against the university team that we had scrimmage games against before we went to the European Championship, we worked on that high-low because we worked on some space. And, and I believe that we don't learn these things until we play in a games of purpose or a small side of games. Um, and again, we, we identified how to free up space in, 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 in our transition. And I guess the reason why I'm finishing on this clip now um, and we really encourage you. This was a bronze medal game from two years ago, and we we were 14 up with 3.30 something to go. Um, and we ended up only one up with, as you can see on the clock, 16.2 seconds to go. Man, they came back into the game, and we ended up going from behind. But because we try and give them so much freedom in transition, and we try and teach them to play that in all the space, they had the bravery to get a quick inbounds and you see what happens. So we try and give them joy and comfort that they can do that in the um so obviously not the best choice in the world to go down the side and against the trapping press team. But again they never wavered and you can see the least amount of dribbles and we really encourage that with our three dribble max and the guy that turned lower ends up hitting the three to to win bronze medal for us. Um so yeah so I, I think I'd I hope you got some stuff out of this. Um so yeah, any questions? I'd be, I'd be happy to, um, I'd be happy to answer. So, Paul, I know one of the big questions that has come up um, has been the um, being able to access a copy of the video, as well as do you have diagrams of the, of the drills uh, available for the for the attendees? Um, I can, I can, I can. I mean, if they if they contact me, I'm, I'm happy to share. Um, definitely. I mean, I, I it's um, something that I, I like to do. I like to talk basketball and stuff like that. So. They can get me on Twitter. They can get me on Facebook. They can get me on my email. I might just put it into the chat if that's okay, if, if people want to. Um, and I'll, I'll send as, as much as I can. I, I'm not a big diagram guy. 
Um, I like the video a lot of stuff because I just think that kids these days are, are visual learners. Um, so we video an awful lot of stuff um, and, and try and present it to them that way. We video our schemes, we video a lot of things and we I try and we use our WhatsApp groups. I mean, we're, we're volunteers in Ireland where we don't have as much resource as you guys do have in the States in terms of managers and things like that. So, you know, it's hard to kind of um, have the time to, to do everything, but I, I try and video as much as I possibly can to, um, to show as opposed to diagrams and, you know, even when we don't have stats, people, I always video our games because I always believe you can start from video and rather than the other way around. So, um, so yeah, so I put that in the chat there, my, my email address. Um, and so that's in there now. And um, yeah, you can get me on Twitter. It's Paul T. At Paul T. Keller on Twitter and my Facebook. And, and I'm more than happy to converse with people. And I'm, I like WhatsApp and I talk to people. So yeah, feel free. No problem whatsoever. Perfect. And I know, uh, so one question that did come up was uh, how, you know, how long do you spend on your uh, SSGs in a total practice? Um, I suppose I transitioned from that. So I suppose I would have spent very little as a younger coach, maybe even up to about four or five years ago, I would have done very, very little. Um, and I used to get very frustrated and that the transfer wasn't happening from the work ethic that they were giving in practice. So I probably spend... And I suppose the whole topic now, I suppose since, since um, Van Gundy spoke about only playing five and five a few weeks back, I'm not sure I'm fully in agreement because I do think that there are certain aspects that you need to break down in, in your offense or some actions you need to break down or some um, area that you have to uh, work on. So we just break everything down into a game scenario. Um, and, um, you know, we just, we spend a lot of time on our small side of games or games of purpose. I try, I think I can, I, I'm, I'm the small side of the game. Yeah. I, I, that's just another debate, but we spend about 70% of our practice really with the national team on small side of games, about 20% on five and five and about 10% on, on block breakdown where we where we're teaching. And I suppose our block breakdown, um, I suppose our block breakdown, is used more. I've done a better job as a head coach this year. Their assistants, where we allow them to pull guys out. So our block coaching is done on the sideline, where we pull players out of the drills to teach them that, as opposed to using it as a as a general thing. So we use our block learning as a warm up from time to time, rather than an actual teaching element of, of, of practice. Uh, this question comes from. Uh from Coach Mike Zillman, who is uh, Coach Z, who uh, did a, a recent uh, a session for us. What coaches have kind of influenced you and, and helped shape you in developing your uh, your SSGs? Um, really, I guess, I, I suppose I can credit two guys for bringing Dawn Smith in, Martin McGettrick and, and Francis Sullivan. They were on our coaches committee at the time um, in Ireland, and they brought Dawn in, and I was always an on all guy. Um, on air and within 20 minutes of Dawn speaking of what they do in Canada in phase A, phase B, phase C and phase D, it absolutely changed everything and how I structured practice, how I taught, how I emphasized, I guess, really. Um, and then Kirby Schwepp, um, another Canadian, he started talking about games of purpose and, and teaching your actions through small sided games as opposed to on all. Um, so he's had a massive one. But in terms of my philosophy and how we play, I suppose an awful lot of transition guys, you know, I've been around Davidson quite a bit, um, more than quite a bit. And, and I suppose their transition and their motion, what they call motion, um, Mike Bray in his flow offense, um, a ton of European coaches. Um, so I suppose all the transition guys, because we're, we're quite small and we're quite you know, we don't have the size of other teams. And I've, as a player, I enjoy getting up and down. I enjoy playing transition basketball. Um, I believe it kind of got crowds into it and it made them enjoy it. So I suppose I've always been a tempo coach in one respect. So the relearning I had to do to make transition basketball and teach it rather than the old style on all in transition, the two-man weave or the, the rebound outlet drills, and break that into having defense every time where 
kids and players had to make decisions um, really probably is, is where I've come from really in, in that respect. But yeah, so a lot of, a lot of people have had an influence on, on how I've developed the coaching and the philosophy, I guess. Um, and the, one of the follow-up questions was, uh, do you know if there are any Don Smith YouTube videos out that are, that are on YouTube? Um, I suppose she hasn't really got her stuff out there, but I suppose if you look at Basketball in Manitoba, um, you know, Basketball Immersion doing off of that sort of stuff. Um, and I'm really still learning. I mean, I'm only, in, I'm only in that kind of phase myself the last four or five years. But I am seeing the benefit of it, I have to say. Um, you know, and we, we've, we've had some clinics at home with younger coaches, and they've spoken about it too. So, and tomorrow we have one too. With actually, Mark McGettrick tomorrow is on our, on our um, thing tomorrow, and he's talking about developing a youth player through, through small sided games as well and, and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I th it's, it's, hard, it's not hard to find, but, they, but people are out there doing it. And if you just type in small side of games, actually one of our very young coaches actually is really, really good at it, Kieran O'Sullivan. He lives by he lives by me actually. He was my assistant last year and brought a lot of that stuff to us. Um, especially the transition stuff. Um so yeah, so yeah, it, it's out there, but basketball Manitoba is is really good. Yeah, in fact, uh, in fact, I'm going to do some research and I have some contacts there that I'm going to see if maybe perhaps we can either get uh, Don or Kirby uh, to come speak uh, here uh, at an upcoming session. So, uh, um, Coach, again, if you could just share your, your email address just or just say it out loud real quick for everybody. And uh, what I'll do is after that, we'll go ahead and close the session so we can get ready uh, for our three o'clock session. Definitely. It's uh, cptk24 at gmail. Um at gmail.com. So I'll just put them one more time there in the, in, in the group chat as well. Um, and um, yeah, I'd love to talk. Um, you know, it's, I think, I think we're all in that area right now where everybody's willing to share, I think. And it's great that there's so many coaches shared on, on, on this platform too. So um, yeah, if you want to reach out, feel free and uh, we, we, we'll, we'll talk basketball. It's great. Oh, this has been excellent. I'm so glad you took time out of your schedule to join us. And, uh, and obviously, when you get here to North Carolina, you've got a, a, a friend so we could catch up and, and do a little visiting and talking when you, when you come, hopefully, when this all clears up and get back here for some camps. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Lance. Take care. And I'm going to go ahead and end the session here so we can prepare for our sessions. At Thank you.